Hi and welcome, welcome back, friends and all, new and old. First video in a long time from my happy place in the nature. Um, just so much to update you on. I wonder if any of it's really important, but today's topic is going to be logical dating advice because our longtime viewer and friend Katie said, can you just give some logical dating advice? So if you don't come to the TikTok lives, we do a lot of talking about all things to do with life over there and it just sometimes spirals, sometimes it's usually funny, <laughs> sometimes it's dark, but it's always good. And um, in any case, today the park is full. It's a beautiful 19 degrees. I love everything full of life. There's a little fire behind over that bush birthday party and a cricket game over there and a family having a little photo shoot here so if you hear the odd cheer or someone making clicking bird noises um, it's all good okay logical dating advice so I've taken a few weeks to think about this and I just keep coming back to the same answer there's nothing really new under the Sun and it's just really not that hard to consider it I don't think it's hard for people to want what they want I think it's hard for them to feel like they can find it and have it right I think mentally they already they're sure of what they want and that part's easy for them it's how you go about like actually getting it that really bums people out but I'm gonna start there anyways I'm gonna start with know what you want it's so simple it will resolve 80 to 90 percent of all that tension or limitation that you feel um, and just it could be anything and this is also going to vary based on age ranges okay so if you're like 18 to 25 it's going to be different if you're 25 to 35 35 45 and onwards okay so knowing what you want okay so the reason i say that is because what you want doesn't have to be fixed like right now okay what you want will generally change through life because your life will change you're going to change your circumstances will change you might make new people you know you might have your own family and your, what you want from life can fluctuate. There are some things that are just generally fixed. Like, I, I know I want kids. I know I want to be married, you know. Um, I know I want to live abroad, or I know I never want to leave my hometown, okay? So, those things, you should have a few of those and um, really honor them. Really honor them, because it has a lot to do with like your boundaries and how you treat yourself and how you let other people treat you. And that will also change in its own way. So I think like when people are entering into a relationship and they're falling in love, they never really consider, or they shouldn't anyways consider, put that juju on themselves, of things going wrong, right? So basically, um, a friend of mine, her mother, we had this talk in her kitchen like 10 years ago and it just like stuck with me. I was like, she has her own kids. Why is she so bent on remarrying for like the fourth time with someone who has kids? I said, what do you, well, what do you really want? I said to her, and she said, uh, well, he has to have kids. He at least had to have been divorced. And I was like, why would you well, usually see, usually when you're young, you would think like that's baggage. Why would anybody want that? Right. But she said, cause I love my kids. I love having kids. I love being a mom and my kids are like grown now. And like, we have a good relationship and it just shows you a lot about someone, how they are with their children. And then I would think to myself, you know, she's in her mid fifties. She's like, I would think to myself, how did you make it? this many decades through life, never having that responsibility, right? It's not about like being a fail. It's like, don't be defensive. It's not about like being a failure or being unlovable. She's just asking, like, she's wondering, I've had to do so much to like get here. Um, if you haven't, how can we relate to each other? So she said, I really want him to have kids. You know, he's probably divorced. He's probably got quite a few kids. Like that's a must for me because we can relate to each other. So when you know what you want, um, oh, that's really cute. There's kids playing in the Creek. I'm just wondering where their parents are. That's where that noise is coming from. I was like, that is really close. It's never happened before. And we're talking about children. The stars align, the stars align. We love it. Oh. Okay. So when you know what you want, you have to also, it helps to understand like why you want it, okay? Because it takes that pressure and judgment off yourself and then you can best articulate that to another person. I'll give you an example from my own personal life which used to get me in hot water. Like when I was younger, now it's like normal or popular to like date a guy with a provider mindset or something, okay? Um, when I was, you know, 15 years ago, um, if I said to someone at a date, I would really uh, like to be with someone who was successful, they'd be like, you're up, oh, this has happened to me, like, more time, I've lost count, okay? They've been like, you're materialistic, you sound like a gold digger, you did it, right? And I'm just like, okay, but let me, hold on a minute, hold on a minute, wait a minute. You're telling me, like, I went to university, 
I worked really hard. I graduated. I paid for that. Like, I suffered through that to earn something. I'm a naturally ambitious person, right? I care about my work. I, I, to the best of my ability, produce the best work that I can. Why would I want to be with somebody who isn't determined? Like, I'm a determined individual, right? So why would, I would never be satisfied with someone who's happy with me just catering to them and taking, 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 right? Like, and I, I would say it like that and they go, okay, that kind of makes sense. I was like, yeah, like, listen, if I'm like ambitious or I'm like steadfast and I'm an enduring individual, I would never be with a sloth. You know what I mean? Like, it's just like we would make each other miserable or he'd get a really good deal out of being with someone who does everything. What, what do I get from that? Like, what's the point, you know? And I said, like attracts like, that's just natural, you know, like that's just natural. And they go, okay, would well, you put it like that? Right, so it's best to really know what you want and why you want it, rather than being um, being shamed into wanting something else. Okay, so another example is saying something like, uh, I heard, I don't know who, there was some creator on, online that said, I'm, when I met my husband on our first date, I told him I had no desire to work, I had no desire to do anything, and he had to take care of me, and he's very wealthy, he's from a wealthy family, plus he's self-made on top, like self-made, okay, he, he made his own fortune on top of that, and she said, I'm not signing a prenup, I'm not doing any of that, I'm telling you, like, right now, and she said the reason, you know, he had no problem with it, and now she's living the life she's living because of that, and some of the comments she got was like, well, what are you for, he can replace you, she's like, no, I'm indispensable to him, because I know everything about him, I do everything for him, that he's no time to do himself, whatever. But where this came from was that her childhood was really unsettling. Like she never knew where her next meal was coming from, you know, um, she didn't know where she was gonna live. You know, God forbid, like you're growing up, you're young, young as some of these kids, going to bed at night, mattress on the floor, a mouse runs across your face. Like, I can understand if you're like 25, 30 now and you're like, never again, never again. I would rather like live alone and suffer than suffer for two people, right? So, this was her logic and she, that's very loud. <laughs> she, um, and she explained it to him in that way. She said, I, I've been poor for so long in such a way that I literally cannot fall in love if I don't feel safe, okay? And this you'll see with a lot of women. Um, I think that's like, that makes a lot of sense. Women generally, you know, to, to fall in love, they need to feel cared for. So if that's in a material sense, you just say, it makes me feel really unsure when you want something from me and you don't give me this foundation, okay? But as long as you know what you want and you know why you want it, then by all means, learn to articulate that in a way that's really palatable to people, right? So you don't have to be aggressive about it. You don't have to be um, harsh. You can just say, uh, you just say, um, you know, this is how it makes me feel and this is why, right? And then they can do with that what they will. You're not for everyone. If they don't want it, that's fine. If they want to roll with you, that's fine. If they understand, that's fine. If they don't understand, that's cool too. That's fine. Everybody, you're not for everybody and not everybody has to agree with you, okay? Now be clear, here's another one, be clear. So know what you want and be clear about it. Like know the path to what you want as well. So I've seen this trend on TikTok and I kind of could not believe my eyes. And then I downloaded Hinge and there is people out there who will say like, don't have kids. And then the prompt for children, they put want children. And then under relationship, they put not sure figuring out my dating goals or casual okay so when a woman and i'm not supposed to like you know make men's lives easier because that's just like girl code or something these days on the internet but that sends off that's alarming to a woman that's very alarming that's saying i want to part i want a part of this experience but i don't want the responsibility and the work that goes with it you know it's like very like you put people on guard when you have that it's best to actually understand like, okay, most people, most people have children in wedlock. So if that's one of your prompts, articulate that. Articulate that in the part that you can write or a voice prompt or on your date, just say, um, the reason I didn't answer what I'm looking for, because generally, first of all, it's a really stupid question. Secondly, um, I'm unorthodox or I don't want to remarry, but I want children. You know, just like be 
articulate, okay? Just be clear, just say, I want this, I'm willing to do this to get it. You don't get something for nothing in the world. That's just not how the universe works, okay? So naturally then, once you are able to put yourself in the shoes of someone outside yourself and ask yourself, how does that look to them? Am I doing a good job like pitching myself, right? Because ultimately you're co-creating with another person when you seek a relationship. And if you want to like negotiate terms, which you do like emotionally, mentally, physically, everything else, okay? You have to be a good partner in some way. So that's what I would suggest. I would say if you're logical about it, like really once you know what you want, everything else is like much easier. Then there's practical things. Like if you're on an app or if you're introduced through friends, I really think phone calls are fashionable and they need to make a comeback of some sort. So please consider for your own safety, okay? Man, woman, doesn't matter. Um, after chatting for a bit, just say, can we get on a five minute phone call just before we meet up? It would give me peace of mind. I just want to know if we have chemistry because like, you know, safety aside, it's just not a good use of your time to have like failed first date after failed first date. Because like, for example, me, I don't translate well on text. I don't translate well on paper. My personality is like too big. It just like doesn't really... You know, and I like like to laugh and joke a lot. So sometimes on text message, people are like, you're unhinged. It just like, doesn't, you know, but I don't, honestly, I don't care how your day was. I don't. I've asked that like a few times back and you don't even care how my day was. Like, let's joke, right? That's like how I test the waters. So I can see that doesn't translate well all the time. Now, if it does and I get you on the phone and you're crippled with shyness or you're arrogant, they're both arrogant, you know, I'm just like, well, I'm, like, I'm gonna save my night. I'm gonna stay at home and watch Halloween movies. Like, I'd rather do that, right? So please, for your own safety, just if you get a weird feeling, okay? Always let someone know where you are. That's how you keep your safety. Um, if you live with people, let them know where you're going. Get the details up front. Please never go to someone's house on the first date. Um, this is like, you know, if you're like some super famous soccer star and you can't leave your house, you might entertain someone at home for dinner. For the other 99.999% of us, we'll go to a public setting. So just like consider that. That's like very logical. Get a phone call out of the way. See if there's chemistry. See if that person rubs you the right way, the wrong way, okay? And now another thing I want to discuss is like maturity, okay? Just because someone is older does not guarantee that they are a mature, seasoned individual in the world that has figured themselves out, okay? So the reason I bring this up is I remember years and years and years ago, much to my dismay, um, I was um, a coworker with a coworker, I was a colleague, and her and her husband were married, and um, obviously, and they were very like traditional, right? So basically what happened was, <laughs> so these kids are making me laugh. <laughs> they, um, they set their, uh, in their culture, like arranged marriages are common and like not dating around is, very common like they just don't really do that too often okay um, and so what happened what, what had happened was they set their friend up with another one of their friends and so I was like you know good luck to them whatever and um, at work she was like on the phone to her husband talking about it and then she gets off she turns to me and she goes oh you know she did this like thing she shouldn't have done it was like so bad I'm thinking you lunged across the table and plunged a steak knife into this man's head during your starter course. Like I'm thinking, like, when you say something really bad happened, I'm thinking really, <laughs> something really bad happened. I'm not like, I'm not one for like embarrassment, you know? Like I just like generally have a good sense of self. It takes a lot to like humiliate me, right? So I was like, okay, if something bad happened, this chick did something crazy. No, they called her crazy. She did something very logical. So I was like, wait a minute. I'm not devil's advocate. And though I have a very strong kinship with women, if I think something's wrong, I'm like, that's wrong. You're wrong. I don't care if you're a woman. You're wrong, okay? What had happened was this woman was on a date with this guy. And on the first date, she said to him, oh, well, like, I'm dating because, like, I want to get married. And he's like, okay, cool. And they chatted. And then he, he said, I'll see you again. He texted her goodnight. And then he went home and told their mutual friends that she was crazy, that she was desperate, that she was talking about marriage before, like, a three-month relationship or some such thing, okay? He said, like, it hasn't even been, like, three dates, right? And I said, hold on a minute, how old's this girl? They're like 26. I'm like, how old's this guy? They're like 29. This was 10 years ago, right? And even back then, I was like, I was, I was the girl's age-ish. I'm younger than that now, but anyway, 
<laughs> Math is hard. Carry the one. And I was like, hold on a minute. This man's like a third into his lifespan if he even lives that long. And it's not even that he's like not ready for marriage or whatever. I'm like, why are you dating if you don't know what you want? That's my like first question. He asked to be set up. He agreed to this. He sought it out, okay? The thing I don't get is you're not mature. You're not a mature person. If that woman said something to put you off, why are you tattling? Why are you tattling to the peanut gallery? Like, that's weird to me. And I thought, good riddance. I'm so happy for that girl she got out. She was crushed for a bit. She, you know, made her look bad. She was embarrassed. It was like a little rumor or something. And I said to my friend, I said, um, oh, you're wrong for that. You're wrong for that. He said he's in, he's in want of a wife. He's looking. You set him up. And he made her look crazy, she said, yeah, but she shouldn't have said that. I said, hold on a minute. What did you say to your now husband when you were chatting on MSN or whatever? She go, oh, like I have to be married. Okay, so what's the difference? So why is it, okay, it worked out for you, so it's okay. But someone who's in the process, they're not there yet. It's okay to like embarrass them and shame them. That's just silly. I was like, come on, this is like ridiculous, man. And I said, how do you think like, first of all, I'm like, it goes against logic. You know what your community is. You know how your culture is. She's a product. She's a product of her environment. So are you. Why are you, why are you being so horrible? I just like didn't get it. And I said, that's not fair. He's completely in the wrong. He could have disagreed with her. He could have found it odd, which I don't know why you would. You said you're looking to get married. So you got set up on a date, but now you're making her look crazy. You're making her look crazy and that's wrong, right? So here's what I want to say. Please be mature. Please be mature about it. If you cannot be a mature person, social graces are a learned skill, okay? You can adopt some type of like decorum and grace. Like if God didn't make, like I wasn't gracious from birth. I had to like learn to be graceful, okay? You can do it. I can do it and I'm stubborn. You can do it, okay? He should have just said, thank you so much. It was wonderful to meet you. I wish you all the best and been on his way. And then he could have said, if he was gracious, you know, it was only when you said that you're looking to be married, though I thought I was too. Something just kind of clicked and I just don't feel ready and I don't want to waste your time, right? Because you're not lying to her. You're telling her what set you off and, and you're being good about it. You're, you're taking accountability, you're acknowledging. But ultimately, it's what I don't get. Most people date to marry or partnership or companionship and jumping, you know, uh, was it T.D. Jakes, he said, if you think it's hard being single, try being single again. A lot of people just don't have that like emotional endurance to jump from one bond to the next. So once they're in, they just like to stay put, okay, if it's healthy and happy, of course. So don't shame them for like wanting happiness. That's so weird. So if you're on a date and someone says, and by the way, I've never ever asked that of anyone. I think it's a weird thing to ask because as a woman, you lose, lose, okay? So if, if you want to get married and you say that, the person thinks you're weird and even if they want it to, I don't know, just the way the world is right now. And if you say, uh, I don't know, it's kind of safer only because people can hear the wrong thing. They can hear like, oh, we both like coffee and we both want to get married. So what's wrong? Why don't you want to hang out with me? It's like, oh, just because I want to get married doesn't mean I want to marry you, you know, and men think this, everybody thinks this, okay? So that's why it's a weird, touchy, touchy thing to answer. People take like more like a rejection energy about it. But on three, four separate occasions, on a first date, a man in his 30s, okay, these are different people, have asked me on a first date, do you want kids? Okay, like nothing to preface that nothing. And I thought, how do I answer this? And I thought, you know what, I'll just be diplomatic. I'll say, with the right person, I would love to have children. And I ended it there. I didn't ask them if they wanted kids, nothing. Because I find that so weird, what had happened afterwards, I never saw these people again, because I don't know, it's like some weird screening process where they just go to like doing the, what's it called? Booty, what's it called? I don't know what it's called. Where they're like, you up? And it's like 1 a.m. Or it's like, hey, I'm also at a bar. Do you wanna meet up? It's like, no, you're, that's not a date. That's not like a proper excursion into the world. Like, no, you can call me at a godly hour and like ask me out properly, right? Because even though I don't know, like, okay, these people said they wanted to be married with kids, but say that they didn't. It doesn't matter if you know what you want and you, this is your end goal over here. Don't entertain anything between this and this. <laughs> okay. Yes. You have to get to know the person, but that's not the way that's not like fatherly behavior. That's not husband behavior. Is it right now? Everything works differently for different people. I know several couples that have hooked up on a whim and they ended up falling in love and getting married. 
I know uh, one girl I studied with, girl, she's a woman, I studied with, she um, met a guy, it was a one night thing, and uh, what happened? That same weekend, they ended up booking a trip and went on it the following weekend, moved in together like that same month, and we're together for years, okay? So it didn't work out because of visa issues. I've never seen a cup peel, that's really interesting. But anyway, um, different strokes for different folks. But for the majority of us, like women have to take like a defensive stance when they're dating, and I think men just need to be more clear, okay? So that being said, um, be mature and be gracious, right? Man, woman, doesn't matter. If a man does something really unsavory, don't tell him it bothered you because he's gonna learn something. <laughs> he's gonna learn what pushes your buttons, okay? It feeds him energetically and he's gonna know how to get under every woman's skin after that. Don't, it, he goes like Super Saiyan or like Super Mario. Don't give him that. Just be gracious. Just why are you losing your temper? Just say, you know, I don't really appreciate the way you spoke to me. I have my own standard of treatment. This is what I adhere to. If you would like to, you can treat me this way. If you don't, hey, everything's fine. I wish you the best, take care, and just like don't ever speak to them again. So, recap. <laughs> I'm a little bit scattered from, from the noise, but um, know what you want. That's like 80% of the work. Expect it. To be clear about it, okay? When do you want kids? Ideally, would you like to live together? Would you not? Okay, you don't have to like be really sterile or like clinical about it, but have some idea, have some idea. Like when I was younger, I didn't really give kids much thought. I just thought it would kind of like happen. And then I got older and I saw that it hadn't happened. And I have like, you know, I'm really tight with my family. Like I'm, I cultivate my relationships. I work really hard on that. So I take great pleasure in like family and family life. So something that's really important to me is marrying someone who's good with their family. Because I've been in serious relationships with someone who's not good with their family. Who's like, just they just like to fight. They just like to push people away and like do that dance, okay? And it was really frustrating and I don't want strife in my family. I know there's things people can't help. I understand that, okay? There's abhorrent things people can't forgive. I understand that. I don't mean exceptional cases. I mean the majority. I don't want a man who's not on good terms with his parents or mother or whatever, right? Um, and I prefer, I can say, like, I, because I didn't have a lot of siblings, I prefer a man for my future husband to come from a large family. It was like half a dozen of you, okay? The more the merrier. Because in my mind, and I love being an aunt, okay, you know this, I'm very close with my nieces. Um, I'll have just like an, I'll just have like a plethora of nephews and nieces to like take around the world and have fun with and cook for, right? So you have to kind of have some idea. And once you're like settled in that, and for me, you have to know the, like, if he's a very good man, that's not a deal breaker if he's an only child. He's a good man, he's a good man. He's gonna give me a happy life, fine, right? Um, but you have to know like to what extent that matters to you. Like the example I gave of the woman who said, I have to marry for security. I literally, like I freeze up and I can't fall in love if I don't feel safe and understood. Hey, to her, that was a deal breaker, fine. She can't marry someone that's not a multimillionaire. She succeeded because she was like honest and like sincere in her search and her pursuit, right? Other things I would suggest is like, consider what matters to you today, will it matter to you in the future? So I heard recently from a friend, like someone, they're dating someone and they're like, um, where, what do they say? They're aesthetically mismatched, right? And that was a deal breaker for them. And I thought at your, your stage in life, that's a silly thing to think because 10 years from now, you're gonna have so many health problems. You're not even gonna care what your partner looks like as long as they're like rolling you in bed and giving you foot baths, <laughs> a little biblical, you know? So it's like, you just have to know like, will this matter to me forever? And know to the degree that it matters. I'm not telling you to settle. I'm not doing that because you can't compromise your values. Like you can't force chemistry, but be like more, self-reflective like really try to like ask yourself you know what can I do without what can't I do without so just think of it that way like for me I'm a conversationalist I'm a very cerebral person I love people who make me laugh I've tried dating men who were not like me they were not really bookish they were not really intellectual they were not really interested in what goes on in the world and at the end of the day I was like as much as I like you and you're likable and you're like sweet and charming it's like you know, 
when it's like winter and it's dead outside and you're sat side by side, how many like Will Ferrell movies can you possibly consume? How many soccer games can you like blast your eyeballs with? Like at what point do you talk about anything of any substance or worth, right? And for some people, they love to laugh. That's the most important thing for them. They want to consume that media. They want to have fun or they want to be active, you know, whatever. But for me, like I'm mentally active, so I know that. You know, it's more important for me to be understood than like anything else, right? So you have to know yourself, please. Like before you date and just leave like a trail of discarded broken hearts, just like ask yourself very, very carefully. And when you do that, you know your value and you're better able to step out into the world. And it also helps if you're younger, like if you're under, you know, 25 or 29 or whatever, if you're in your 20s, it helps to kind of ask yourself, you know, like you have a little bit more leeway, like of course, time is relevant in the end, but if you, you can have a renaissance in your 50s, like my friend's mom did it, she just went crazy, like she went boy crazy at like 54. But um, you can just say, you know, I wanna be married ultimately, but I was so serious growing up, I've never like dated. I just wanna like go on some dates, you know? Just like go on, go to the museum, go to the park, go to a restaurant, okay? So just like give yourself some freedom to try some things, okay? Um, I hope this has been helpful. I'm gonna collect my thoughts and record again. And uh, until then, I love you very, very much. Thank you for being with me as always. Thank you for checking out my Etsy and Big Cartel. I have more books to come. And uh, thank you for following me on TikTok. I'm most active on there, though I'm trying my best. This is my year, 2023 is gonna be the year I like try to like spread myself out a little bit more. I'm getting more comfortable like online. Like I feel, I find it like very hard to do this, to like put my face and stuff into the world. Even though like I don't have a, a lot of viewers, it's, to me it's like a big deal. So I'm trying my best to just like test the waters and like go onto a new platform. Like I'm still terrified of Twitter, you know? Like I'm just like trying and Instagram still scares me. Um, you know, it's really scary is the DMs when people get angry, but uh, I survive. So I'm trying my best to just like put myself out there. So thank you all so much for being here, like watching and listening. And um, I'm sorry for yelling at the start of the video. I was really trying to like <laughs> talk over and I didn't want to start again. Um, but yeah, apart from that, I'm going to continue on relationships because I've had a lot of questions on that subject. So we'll continue with the next video on that. Thank you once again, and I love you very much. Bye bye for now. Hi again. So my camera looks like it's going to die, so I hope I make this as quick as possible. But I wanted to do like a part two because I was a little bit disoriented um, in the first video. But basically I said, you have to know what you want. And the other person has to know what they want and voice that to you. Should they do that? Should that actually happen to occur? You must be like gracious and accepting of it, okay? So I'll give you a case in point. This really did happen. I know someone who knows someone who knows someone who went on a date uh, with somebody who is in a, a very successful person. They've got a lot of money. They're divorced. They've got grown children. And there's a bit of an age gap between these, like generationally, it's like almost two decades or so. And they're both older. So this person's like in their mid, early to mid forties and the other person's like obviously in their early sixties. And they said like, at my stage of life, I want a nice lady to go to dinner with. I, I'm always at functions and, and country clubs, golf clubs, whatever, right? So I want someone to see the world with. They, they have a yacht, they like boating and they went on a date, they met online. And at the date, the girl was like fully herself, which is fine, but um, she's like, she likes to joke. Okay, so this, I resonate because I love to joke. And she was dropping like foul language and being like a little bit vulgar, whatever, right? So the next day, the gentleman texted this lady and he said, thank you so much, I had a wonderful time. However, um, you know, I, I, I wish you all the best. Like, it's not what I'm looking for. And she said, can I ask why? Um, and he said, well, yes, like, I don't feel that you carried yourself in a way um, in that I would like to see for my future. She's like, well, can you elaborate? So she's like pressing him, right? So just accept it, okay? So, but okay, it's okay if you wanna know. And then he said, well, I don't like how you, um, we're kind of like speaking like a frat boy. He didn't use that language, but he basically said like you were dropping vulgarities and kind of being like harsh with the staff and like all this. And she became extremely defensive and like argumentative. And she's like, who the you to tell me how to behave? I do what I want, you know? So I'm not saying she's wrong, he's right. I'm not saying he's wrong, she's right. I'm just saying, look, this is a clear mismatch. Hey, like the man said he wants someone he can enjoy life with, see the world with. Um, 
and the generationally right like generationally maybe for him growing up girls didn't make toilet humor jokes or whatever at the dinner table okay um and that was like a little bit like jarring for this man and he has every right he is in that stage of life he just wants to enjoy sunsets and long walks in the park okay and you know she has to like accept that and don't be like defensive, okay? Like clearly it's a mismatch. It's for your own good, hey? Like, and he told you in a nice way. And when he, he stopped replying because this is like bordering on harassment and verbal abuse, she started telling everyone, he's horrible. Can you believe he said this? He was said that. And when I heard it, I said, well, he's absolutely right. Look at, I mean, look at what you're doing. He doesn't want you. You don't want him either. Just don't want each other. Just leave it alone, right? But you have to accept like what people want. And if you felt judged, you know, that's another th karmic thing. We have to like think about why that made us feel the way it made us feel. Um, but we must make the most of that situation, okay? So again, this person, like, I mean, I know a 50 year old that doesn't act like a 50 year old, that doesn't know how to run a business. Maybe they're established, they're wealthy, but their partner's a dummy, they're a dummy. They don't know anything about like the law or contracts, what's legal, what's not. They're never accountable for anything. They're never responsible for anything. They think everything is everyone else's fault. And they don't, generally they, they speak to women like they're very stupid, you know? That's why they have a stupid partner. And I'm just thinking about it and I'm like, you're not a mature person. You're so much older than me, but you're not really that bright, you know? So if someone is just not on your wavelength in any capacity, why are you frustrated about that? Okay, this gentleman told her very nicely, actually. I was like, I, I, you could tell he was from like good, a good upbringing right and um consider it that way just say you know what i'm a playful person i want a playful partner this man is not on my wavelength it is what it is ciao right but to like lash out and all this other stuff like i don't have to act like a lady to have a gentleman it's like sure there's someone for everyone okay but the majority of the time people don't have to agree with you they don't have to conform to your idea of what your perfect lover is right he has every right to want like his ideal mate and you have every right to want your ideal mate that's what i mean about grace like she could have handled that graciously and he probably could have thought of someone that would be right for her down the line i've done that loads of times i've set people up some of them are married now like you just have a knack you pull someone's name out of the ether and you're like you should call this person you should go poke that person on facebook people don't do that anymore but you know just be gracious not because like you know, you owe them anything or but just be gracious for your own peace of mind. I did that like ruined her week, you know? She was like fighting with herself on that for like days to come. So when someone else knows what they want, it's not aligned with you, ciao. Ciao, you know, like why would you even want to be with someone who didn't think of you as their ultimate partner, right? So I wish you all the best. I love you all so much. And bye bye again.